Hi, my lovies. Um, I went to the desert. Today is Monday. On Thursday, I went to the desert. Um, not because I wanted a little vacation, but because something happened Thursday that was the kind of thing that you only will want to get in your car and drive away from it. Um, there's a term for it, and I call it glamping. Remember that time that I went to glamp up the coast of California and I stayed in a tent and uh, like a like a sort of outdoor hotel room tent and there was a fire and I made a fire and the next day I, I thought I was going to keep driving and go away but the next day I realized that I just needed to go home. It was around that time that Herbie was living in my house downstairs and it was driving me nuts because every time I walked on the floor above him I thought about him. Every time I made a smoothie I thought oh I should give some to Herbie. Every time I made food I thought I should give some to Herbie. So you can imagine from morning until my head hit the pillow he was on my mind and it felt entirely unnatural to have your 86 year old stepdad on your mind at all times. As much as I love him it was like it was like an unnatural thing for a 40 something year old woman to be concerned like that at that level and I didn't want to keep going like that but I also you know felt responsible because I moved him out here but more than responsible I knew that he was so happy he was so happy and I was so unhappy so I started thinking let me drive up the coast maybe I'll get a place somewhere else maybe it's time for him to be in Venice and me to be somewhere else and then I was like, no, it's time for him to be out and me to stay in my home because it's my home. And when I decided that and I found him an apartment and when I became certain that that's what needed to happen, I was okay. But in the meantime, you could call what I did glamping. We, we had my friend Linda and I had a term for it because glamping is the energy, instead of going towards something, towards a trip, towards a destination, towards a feeling, you're kind of running away from something and there's a time and a place for it. Like I do think glamping is good because you glamp and then there you are sitting there feeling miserable and I don't like to go around town or around to different states miserable. So when this thing happened and it had to do with a guy and it had to do with the guy that I was trying to let go of and I let him back in and then the pièce de résistance happened Thursday and I was like, I, my brain was like I, moon juice in the car. Uh, uh, I put chocolate. I packed enough that I could have just driven for days. A cutting board, my best knife, uh, moon juice, four moon juices, uh, chocolate, my uh, Zen Bunny chocolate. I packed a big bag of Maggie's Farms greens, avocado, even olive oil, lemon, lime, um, two avocados. So I would have been sustained for two, three days easy. Um, but carrots. But what happened was, apples, oranges, what happened was is that I got, I, I was just like going, going, crying, mourning, bleh. and then I was like, I was going to drive as far as Sedona. I wanted to see, see Kelly, but I didn't want to tell her I was coming because I knew I was in a little bit of a flux, a volatile state, a sad state, and I, I had, um, I had a pimple here and, a, and I picked my skin here and I just felt so awful. And when I go on trips, I like to take everybody with me because it's so much fun. When I glam, it's not, it's not like, hey everybody, I'm feeling, you know, I can tell you guys that I was feeling crappy, but you don't just like, while you're processing something, I don't anyway, just go, Bleh. you know, that's just not the time and the place. So I decided uh, somewhere on the way there, I was talking to my friend, Carrie, who helps me out with things. She helps me with out with travel plans and things around the house, like Airbnb stuff. And I just said, you know, I just want to go to a place where I could see real men, <laughs> not hipster men and not, and she goes, well, there's this place, ha happy and happy. I'm like, I just want to have a cocktail. I just want to have a cocktail and see people. So, um, man, people, women, people, just people like real people. And so I, like a saloon, that's what I wanted. She goes, there's a place called Pappy and Harriet's and it's like a saloon. There's like sawdust on the floor. I was like, I'm going. I had to drive 40 minutes back towards home to go up into the valley, like 20, 30 miles, winding road, lost connection with her, didn't know the hotel that I was staying at, somehow found it. I walked into the middle of like a Coachella, Coachella scene, which was not exactly what I was hoping for, but there was live music. And I just kind of moved with the crowd and I was like, this is absolutely perfect. I needed people around me. I needed to be lifted. The energy was beautiful and light and happy. 
I found the hotel. It was like, uh, before I found the hotel, I got in the car to find the hotel. I didn't realize it was just like right down the walk and I couldn't move my car. The car, oh, even before that, this is cool. I got there and it was a concert that was sold out and I was like, sold out. And this big man with a big belly and gray hair and he was like, check with her. And the lady just took one look at me and she goes, give me your arm. And she gave me a band. She's like, don't worry about it. Just go in. So that was beautiful. And then when my car got stuck in the sand, I got out of the car, I looked around and I was like, then I got back in the car and I went like this, <laughs> like, oh. and this man, young man could see what had happened. He's got a beer bottle in his hand and he was like a green beer bottle and he goes, hey, do you want me to push it? And then he goes, hey guys, let's push her. And there was like six people in the front of my car, women, men, just pushed it out and I got to drive around to the back of the hotel and I, I feel like I was... Uh, nurtured, cared for. By the time I woke up in the morning, I was like, look where I'm waking up, and this is so disorienting, and it's so dry. It's almost like the desert dried my tears. And the willingness to shift the energy, energy and drive away, the willingness to say, it may be hard, but I'm stopping this relationship as it is. Love never goes away, but it changes forms. And I was absolutely clear that this time it just changed forms. You don't do it, the universe is going to do it for you. So I came home and I thought I'd rather feel miserable in my bed with my rebounder, green juice, my bath, and that's what I did for just a couple days. And, and sure enough, by like Sunday or Saturday, it was weird, by Saturday, I would have Thursday, by Saturday I was like, I'm hopping on my bike and I'm going to go to Air One because I'd never been there and I'm going to have one of their tonics and which they make with coconut oil and stevia, which is totally legit, which is what I'm having now. I'm having coconut oil and stevia and a little bit of almond milk, but no sugar. Um, and I, then I stopped at this place, Zinc, because this lady that I had met at Air One, she's a little older than me, and I was like, where do men go? Where do people go? Where do people like, you know, not young, all the young hipster people, but like, and Venice is changing. There's Google, there's Snapchat, there's Yahoo. I mean, it's just like uh, Silicon Valley moved to to um, hipster land and hippie land in Venice. It's changing like daily. But I'm like, real people, where, and we were talking about it. She goes, well, that place right on the corner, Zinc, is kind of French. And I went in there and I talked to the bartender and that was nice, but it wasn't quite my vibe. So I went to the butcher's daughter, which is completely my vibe because it's mostly vegan. I think they have eggs and they have organic wine. Everything's organic. And I sat there and had a beautiful kale salad. I even Snapchatted. And Lucy was like, how are you? I told her what happened. And she's like, you're amazing. Still showing up in the face of what you're going through. It's extraordinary um, and inspiring. And I got a letter from somebody saying, I'm in a bad way, but watching you reminds me what is good in this world. And I thought, that's why I show up. So a little bit after, I met there's a redhead next to me and we started talking and she said she got hired to do kitchen production as a consultant for Moon Juice. And I was like, oh, cool. And I told her my name. She's like, I've heard of you. So we started talking and she looked at her phone. And just that day, I said on Snapchat, I want to go dancing. Like, I want to go dancing, but I don't really have anyone to go with. I want to go out. And this woman, Erin, said, she messaged me, go yourself. And I was like, yeah, I'll go myself. But I had nowhere to go. And I didn't know where to go. I would go, but I didn't know where to go. So she looks at her phone. She goes, oh. I have to go soon. There's a show at nine. And I was like, oh, a show? She goes, yeah, it's live music. Do you want to come? And after Pappy and Harriet's, I'm like, I need more live music in my life. That's it. I miss it. So we walked home to my house and we took an Uber to this show. And I also said to myself, you know, I just need somebody to be attracted to. I don't need to go out with anybody. I just need to know that there's like interesting men out there. Like I'm not ready to engage really. But just to see them would be nice. And wouldn't you know it, we go into this place after the music we went to. We went to this place that was doing Prince music. And there were these two cute guys dancing, like uh, age appropriate, which is shocking. Um, they are musicians. And we just danced and had fun. So my little glamping trip dried out my tears set the energy straight, and I knew when to come home. I didn't keep running away. I drove enough away to shift the energy, to get myself out of whatever I might have been sitting in, because if we sit in it sometimes, 
in the space that it happened, it can go wrong. Like, I'm not saying we shouldn't feel because I processed, believe me, I was by myself in the car for hours and I processed every minute. But I don't know, there was something about geographically just eh, and it worked because Saturday had a great time, Sunday, today's Monday, and I'm, I'm really doing well. And I feel like it's clean. The energy's clean now. You know, it's not like he's not called, he called and blah, 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 and I'm like, you know. Uh, I love you always, but I love you from afar. If you ever need me as a friend, I'm here, but no, 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 no. And I mean it this time. It's not like I'm doing anything to get him to do a certain way. I actually really feel it. And it was a long time coming. And I think we can only know for ourselves when it's time. Like we feel it through and through. Like when we know we want a tonic and we know we want a smoothie. And when we know... I guess the cleaner we get, too, the more we can see and really see and understand what's nonsense, what's too much drama, what's toxic, what is other people's drama, OPD, and are we really going to let it into our house? And I had been letting it in because it was bits and pieces. It wasn't everything, but it was definitely there enough that it felt inconsistent with who I believe myself to be, right? Uh, who I believe myself as a person to eat well, live well, think well. And then I had this relationship that just didn't quite go well. And according to me and according to how I like to live. So here I am just, you know, really now living consistently with who I am. And I'm going to stay there. Um, of course, I have the opportunity to slip back. I could always have the opportunity to be with him. But how I think of it now is I've behaved so gracefully with such love and light that to step back down to where he's at with all of his drama would just bring me back there. And I like being up here. I like being a lady of the clouds, a goddess of the light, a true light of love is how I prefer to be. And I can stay there. We have the choice, right? Where we put ourselves, where we allow other people to place us. Um, once we get out of it, we, we probably best not get back into it. And that's one thing I can say that I'm good at. Once I'm done, I'm, I'm done. So I'm feeling celebratory. Um, I no longer feel a vacuum of loss because since I've, I've realized this, I've had amazing women uh, pop in like Melissa, who does the kitchen consulting, or I went to, because I had a couple drinks on Saturday night, I was so thirsty that I just, instead of going anywhere when I walked Roxy, I went straight into moon juice. I'm like, I need, and they happen to have the fennel juice, which is so hydrating. So this woman was standing there and she said, Dara. And I said, yes. And she said, I watch you. And I was like, let me hug you. And then she started talking about the things that she's done in her life and the that she's looking for what to do with her skills. And I started talking about the tonic line and we started talking about doing it together and her helping me. And so um, there's grace everywhere. But I believe that if we do not lighten ourselves up enough and keep it current, then we will be closed. So that pertains to stuff in the house. I do not believe that this all of this cleaning of my relationship life could have been possible if I had kept all the clutter around. If I had kept Eric, who wasn't transparent with business practices. If I had kept this one, all these different things. If I kept it the way it was, knowing that I needed a clean, I needed to just get clear, then I would have a lot of things that I had to tend to first before this part-time relationship, because that's really what it was. It wasn't a partner or somebody who was living with me, but it was still something that affected me more than I cared to admit, I imagine. At, when I started admitting it to myself that it caused anxiety more than not, I was like, yeah, this is a problem. And I did pray for an act of God, and I got one. So, yeah, you know, sometimes if we don't have the strength to do what it is we know we need to do, whether it's food or decluttering, I think prayer is a good thing, asking above for whatever you believe in, if it's God, if it's spirit, if it's somebody who's passed on, help me out with this. I'm having some difficulty. I don't know if I can do this by myself. We don't have to do everything by ourselves. We can lean on me. We can lean on a friend. We can lean on our other MWD. So I am absolutely certain that the more we practice going where the light is, like a sunflower, the more we practice where to go where the good energy is and stay away from the bad, and the more we practice only letting 
good winds of change into our house. Uh, our homes, the more we practice only letting beautiful organic food come into our bodies, the less likely we are seriously to go that way in the future. And isn't it our beautiful luxury and opportunity to live the most gorgeous lives possible? We can, and it really is up to us. I do believe that. So I wanted to share where I'm at. I know you guys are going to be happy for me because it was like, wow, wow, wow. I think the pimple, the what happened was I got an original pimple and I knew what it was from, I'm going to tell you. Then I started picking up my skin. I was nervous. I was like, oh, is there another? And I just, not looking, I was in bed and I was like, because I knew something was up, something really intense. And then it, I woke up in the morning and I'm like, I just created not, a non-existent, it was like scabs on my face. It was horrible. So I know the, I think, I believe that the original pimple was from, Last week I had coffee a number of times, like when I was having all this stuff going on and I was tired of making food at home and I walked Roxy and I walked right to Groundworks and the first number of times I did have tea and there were like four or five days where I had a small hemp latte, but I do believe it messed up my system, like something wanted to come out. I mean, pimples that come out of our skin is something in our system. If we have skin issues, there's something inside that's reacting poorly, whether it's, you know, a toxin, an allergen, which I'm allergic to coffee. Not only is coffee makes me jittery like everybody else in the bowl, like every, but it makes me, it, it actually lowers my immune system. And so I didn't get a cold sore and I didn't get sick, but I got a pimple. <laughs> so you can be sure that I, when I went to groundwork today, I had a beautiful Earl Grey tea and the man said, do you want me to add some lavender to it? I was like, yes. So I had a little hemp milk and beautiful Earl Grey tea. And this afternoon I made a tonic. So we can take care of ourselves. Even the little choices, like having a little cup of coffee and then another, it starts to take us down. Being with someone who doesn't make us feel good or doesn't bring out the beauty in us takes us down. And, and there's people in relationships where the person has their own issues. Like, I don't blame him. I mean, it's a mess and a half, but I allowed it in. I'm responsible. I'm not really a victim. Um, I can't say that I behave badly in any way across the board in the relationship. I was nothing but loving and giving and generous, but I did participate and I did allow it to get this far. So I do take responsibility for that. And I'm going to be, what I allowed in three and a half years ago, I wouldn't allow in today. It wouldn't be the same. So decluttering takes immense effort. You know, decluttering, when you have to put that much energy into getting rid of something or someone, you're going to think twice about who you let in. You're going to, it's going to make you more discerning. Not closed off, not heart closed, but certainly like, let me get to know you. Who are you? How do you behave? How do you treat me? How do you treat us? So all of those things. How does that food make me feel? You know, I dipped back into coffee and I knew it, but I had to see. We all do that, right? Some of you go back to gluten and it's like, yeah, that didn't feel so good or whatever it is. Like we're human. And that's, I think what I want to let you know is that I did have coffee and I am human. And isn't that really cool? Isn't that really cool that I had drinks on Saturday night and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to have coffee the next day, even though it's like you crave coffee and something fatty and bready and cheesy. I wasn't doing that. I could have had coffee, but I was like, I'm just going to go to Moon Juice. And there I met Tina, who was supposed to have a meeting with a woman, another woman who canceled. And she ended up going to Moon Juice and I ended up going to Moon Juice. And who knows, we could do this amazing thing together. So these serendipities keep showing up because I believe when we act gracefully in the face of the universe and the signs that are there, and we really do practice what we know to be true, eating good food, letting go of certain things and certain people, um, then we do get rewarded. And there is no factual common, there's no fact, right? Like earthy, earthy, earthly teachings and old paradigms teach us don't get rid of that. That's valuable. And you should sell it. This is a whole other video. I think I want to make another video because I know people are getting stuck with getting rid of things. But I'm just going to say this one thing before I hang up because we're on the phone. No, I, the, the thing I want to say is that if you're having a hard time of letting go of things because it's a valuable item and the shoulds, like I should sell it and you haven't sold it, but you keep thinking I should sell it. First of all, it's taking up that space. I should sell it. That's so bad at me. Who am I? I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to feel 
generous enough to just give that to someone who needs it. I should get money for it. And if you don't do it, if you don't have the means to sell it, if there isn't a swap shop or you're not fantastic at eBay and you know it's never going to happen, then the thing still sits there. It takes up your, your psyche, takes up your thoughts. You're like, I should sell it. It makes you feel bad. Like, why didn't I do anything with that thing? And it's also sending a message to the universe that you can't, you feel you can't afford to give it away. And so I, I had a whole conversation with a friend of mine today and finally it got to the point where I said, she goes, well, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to give it away. And I was like, okay, I understand that you feel it doesn't make sense to give away an expensive item. To me, it doesn't make sense to keep it because you're telling the universe, I'll never be able to afford something beautiful like that again. I can't buy this, so why should I give away that? You're the person not being able to afford being generous to someone who might use something that you don't want. So therefore, I can see where it doesn't make sense, but in the new power paradigm of understanding trust and faith, trust and faith in you will be provided for, and that you do not come in with it, you do not leave with it, and it is not yours and it's not going to feed you, even though you think it could feed you, unless you're in the business of selling things and that is your business, and bless those people who do, if it's not your business and you're not gonna do it, then you're better off giving it away because you clear the static, you clear the space, you welcome opportunities and thoughts and creativity, you welcome something new in your space, plus you are letting the universe know and it's not quantifiable. There is no reason to this, I can't give you examples of what will happen to you when you get rid of that lamp but I can cite examples of what's happened to me when I've gotten rid of something but maybe it happens four months later and I can't attribute it to getting rid of that sewing machine that was perfectly new but how do I know that these people who are coming into my life to help me further what's important to me now I don't need to sew now I want to do the tonic line on a big scale if I hang on to the sewing machine, I actually like the sewing machine, I sell the sewing machine, all right. and, and all the stuff, the stuff, the stuff, the stuff, the stuff is ruling my life, and it makes me nuts to think people are doing that, because there's so much we're here to do. We're here to spread love. We're here to be generous. We're here to get generosity towards us, abundance towards us, so that we can flow towards other people. There you have it. That's what I'm getting to. Love you guys. Wish the lighting was better.